Ramshackle by Beck. What a beautiful song. Hopefully you know this song. Maybe you came looking for it, or maybe it just found you. But it is a great song. It's one you need to put on a set of headphones, some earbuds, and sit back in a quiet place and let it crawl inside and find a home in you because it's a great song. It's beautiful. It's haunting. And uh, it's one of Beck's best. So I wanted to show you how I play it. And it's a kind of an interesting uh, tuning. It's E minor, open E minor tuning, which I think it's the only song I've ever seen like that. Maybe there are others, but you're just going to tune it to that, to that right there. So E, B, E, and then everything else is the same, normal. So uh, when we start this song, and there's a couple of different ways you can play it just to give it a, little, a, a different tones and so forth. And it's also nice to play it with two guitars. It's uh, recorded with two guitars, and so it, that adds to its uh, tone and to its emotion. You might just be playing with one guitar, but if you've got somebody else, they can probably play in standard tuning and just kind of carry that E major and E minor uh, tones that go throughout the song, and then you can do some of the other work in this open E minor tuning. Anyway, uh, let's start with, uh, you're going to hit the top two strings open, and the third string, normal D string, you're going to hit on the fourth fret. Now that right there, that note is the same as that note, which is a G sharp. So you're actually hitting just an E major chord right there. You can also play it by putting your finger on the G string, first fret, that's a G sharp, and you can play all four strings. It just has a little bit more, you know, it's got a little bit more depth to it than what I hear on the studio. So I play it right here uh, on the fourth fret of the D string. And then you're just gonna go up one fret on that D string. just hammer on I don't even you can you can strike it if you want to but you can just kind of hammer on with your fingers so from the fourth up to the fret, fifth fret and then it goes to an E minor which you can accomplish a couple of ways you're gonna go from that fourth fret down to the third fret on the D string now that's an E minor you can also add the G string in there open that does give it a little bit more tone uh, before you move back to the E major sound, which is, again, up one fret on the uh, D string. Now, you don't want to hit that open G while you move up to the fourth fret, because then you're playing a G or an E minor and an E major at the same time, and that clashes. So you just uh, maybe want to catch that G string one time while you... Uh, strike that and then you'll same thing you kind of hammer back into that that uh, fourth position there so i'll play that little intro again oops see how that sounds bad and then it goes into the pre-chorus right before or not the pre-chorus but right before the lyrics hits that uh, fourth fret again up to the seventh fret and then the ninth fret and you work your way back down from nine to seven back down to that four so your four that E major is your home base it's in the key of E major so That's 4th uh, fret, 5th fret, up to the 7th fret, and then back to 4th fret, up to 9, 7, back down to 4, so... Sometimes I go to that 5th fret and then back down to 4, but I think it's 7 down to 4. Maybe it is 
fifth fret. Then the lyrics start. You've been so long. So it's four, five, seven, four. Nine, seven, four. Four, five, 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 seven. And I'm all on the D string right here. That's the only uh, string I'm fretting. And I'm hitting the top three strings. Your old bones are all around. So take off your coat, put a song in your throat. Let the dead beats pound all around. Okay, then it goes to the chorus. I go down to the G string first fret. So now that's an E major chord. Now I go on the D string fifth fret, G string sixth fret down to the 4th fret on both of those strings. So from uh, D5, G6 to D4, G4. Back to that E major. So your index finger on the G string, 1st fret. is second fret of the A string, third fret of the G string. Grab the fourth fret of the G string for just a, <clears throat> a tone or two. Then it goes back to that second and third of the, those two strings, back down to your E major. Put your index finger on the first fret of the G string. So that's kind of gets you into the majority of the song. during the do 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 where he is on the let's see the G string go up to the eighth fret down to the sixth fret then then back to that strange chord which is second fret of the A third fret of the G grab the fourth fret of the G for a minute So that's a G string eight, six. You can grab the fourth fret of the G string. I've seen him do that. He did a Live Aid, Farm Aid uh, performance. They kind of countryed it up a little bit, added quite a few instruments because the studio version is pretty stripped down, not a lot going on. Uh, and uh, it sounded a little bit different and it didn't quite have the emotion that the song normally has. Uh, that song to me is for a uh, a bar or a lounge, not a great big stadium. So uh, I see him, and he's he is is playing. Um, he's probably in standard tuning because he's not playing all of it. He's just adding a little bit of the tone as the song is going on. Somebody else is doing a lot more of the work. So, but he does. Uh, he plays the eight of the G, nine of the B, and then drop down two frets. He does catch just the single note on the G string on the fourth fret before he goes down to that first fret. So 
So you can you can grab that if you want. It's not necessary. It's see that sounds just as good. That's mainly during the do 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 part, and then there's just the bridge. I believe is the only thing left. And so, after one of the, I think after the do do do, or at least after one of the choruses, he kind of he hangs on that uh, E major for uh, two beats, and then he goes to fifth fret of the A string which is now, because we have retuned it, that's now an E note. It's an octave above the E string. And so that bridge, which is haunting by the way, he holds that note right there. that tension there and you know that's that's an artist there because if I'm writing a song and I hit that I think well that's not right <laughs> I've never put that in my song it sounds terrible it doesn't it sounds fantastic because it's building that tension so it goes from uh, the fifth fret for four bars fourth fret for one bar sixth fret for one bar and then back to this for four then down again, up again, down for two. And then it goes back to the... So that is where you started, which is on the fourth fret of the D string. That's your E major chord right there. Going up one makes it an E sus four. I don't know what that is up there. I don't know what that is. E five maybe. You can accomplish a lot of it again if you have two guitars or if you want to play it differently throughout the song or you just like the sound of this you can do that whole all that uh, fret moving you can do on the G string you're just going to move down three frets and do the same thing so be, since we retuned this instead of dropping down five frets you're only going to drop down three but it would be whichever one sounds better to you. Uh, I kind of like it up here just with that little, little heavier tone. But maybe you got two guys playing and you can uh, each play it one way and it'll sound really, really nice together. And then one of you that can sing like Beck can sing that song because that's he's a hard guy to sing like. He's got such a unique tone about his voice, which is a wonderful tone. And uh, that song is so subdued. So anyway, that is Ramshackle easily in my top 10 favorite songs of all time and uh, it's a very nice song to play on the guitar so hope that you enjoyed it mm -hmm.